Rufus Wainwright is an American singer-songwriter and composer of operas. He is the son of Loudon Wainwright III, who was, maybe still is, the singer of mostly comic songs, uh, also known for being the singer of the theme tune from M.A.S.H. Uh, and his mother was Kate McGarrigal, who was one of the folk duo Kate and Anna McGarrigal. Uh, he started touring at the age of 13 as part of a band called the McGarrigal Sisters and Family, which included his sister Martha, his mother, and his auntie Anna. Um, after having some life inc uh, incidents and playing live for quite a bit, he released his first I uh, first album in 1998, age 25. He's released 10 more albums since then. He's written, I think, two operas, and he has performed at the BBC Proms. Hi, my name's Dan. So this was Rufus Wainwright's first studio album, and it's my first time listening to it. It's not the first album of his that I've reviewed. I reviewed uh, Want To uh, about, I'm going to say, about four months ago. Actually, I looked at when I uploaded it, exactly four months ago. It was the 1st of June, and it's now the 1st of October. Um, so, uh, but mostly it's going to be about this album, not about that album. So there were 56 songs apparently recorded for this album and whittled down to uh, 12. So, uh, um, yeah, what's that proportion? That's certainly more than uh, three out of four that were rejected. Um, they, him, uh, so Rufus and his producer, whose name I've just forgotten and I haven't got written down, um, spent a long time uh, and a lot of studio money uh, studio time and money recording this album they had kind of basically um an open brief from the from the uh, record label and they used it and they just spent a lot of time so you hopefully you think that this was the cream of those uh, 56 um i would describe this definitely as being singer songwriter but it's it's got its own uh, peculiarities which we'll uh, dig into uh, it's fairly light in terms of if you want to go on the spectrum between um, between hard rock and soft rock and kind of rock of all types. Um, it's on the lighter end of the scale. Sometimes there's strings. Sometimes there's more of a lush feel uh, going on here. There's quite a bit of keyboards, particularly piano, going on and these melodic instruments. At times, it's got a kind of almost um, like almost Sinatra like backing from the and other stuff from the 50s but certainly from the 60s um my kind of go-to reference for uh stuff that's got kind of orchestral backing here but it's still pop music seems to be uh, um um scott walker although he changed quite a bit later on um it has some kind of elements of that and one of the reasons as well as the backing that has that kind of feel is he's got a really kind of strong and strident voice. Before I come to the voice, though, I'm going to say occasionally it sounds a bit like Kurt Vile. Uh, so here's the guy who wrote the Thrupney Opera, uh, which is, so it's uh, it's opera, but it's kind of comic light opera in some ways. Okay, anyway, moving back to here. So musically, I found it fairly engaging. I thought it was nicely handled. Um, uh, so onto his voice. He, he has, I would describe it as an unusual voice. Uh, so he sings, I'm going to try and explain this, he sings through a lot, by which I mean that, uh, so a lot of people, certainly in rock and pop music, uh, they sing with little notes like this, and there's gaps between the words, um, and it's written like that, so that you've got gaps, but he he would sing that line, he, um, you sing with little things like this, and the notes kind of encompass everything. Um, partly is projecting more with his voice, but partly is there's almost always a note going on, which is unlike uh, a lot of other singers. So you've got a lot of held notes. Uh, he does quick breaths in. It's sometimes it feels a bit um, nasal as a result. I'm not sure it's that nasal really, but it just because the held notes. Um, his consonants are at times pretty indistinct and so hard to uh, hear. Um, and I think that's just because that's the nature of his voice. Now, sometimes 
when people sing loud, the consonants start to disappear. And the reason for that is that uh, when you sing louder, mostly what you're actually boosting are the vowels that go loud, and then the tones and stuff are the same as they would normally be. Um, but I don't think that's the case with him. Uh, he's got really good control, and his voice has got some delicate vibrato. Um, and he, he, I, I know that people rate him as a singer, and I can see why, because he just has um, really good kind of technical singing. But he's, he's also fairly good at being expressive as well with it. The songs are about uh, mixed life stuff, I think, but... This is where um, there is a bit of comparison with the previous album. I didn't pick up a lot about what the songs are about, um, partly because I found that it quite hard to listen to and, and uh, pull out the words all the time, and but also partly because in some way it just didn't engage me as much as his the re album that I reviewed previously, but is a later album of his. I really love that. I was okay with this. It's got a mark in the sevens, which is, you know, it means I like it, but it didn't grab me as much. Um, that album, I did a, a quick check back. It was crisper than this. This has got a really languid feel, which gives it kind of expansive and kind of laid back and whatever. Um, but I preferred the other album. So I do rate it, but not as much. Um, and it failed to draw me in in the same way. That's what I think of this album. What do you think of this album? Please do let me know by leaving me a comment down there. And that's it from me for now. Nothing so bright, nothing so small, nothing so pure.